Amen. So praise the Lord. If you don't know the word, sing what's on your heart. Thank you, Lord. It's worthy. And I know y'all got things to be thankful for, so we should always be praising you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Oh, it's for your glory. For your glory, Father. I want to glorify you. Thank you, Lord.
Sometimes we'll be like, oh man, I'm good. I'm straight. Like I said earlier, you know, I got saved. I got baptized. I, I'm good. Oh, there's more to it than just getting saved and having, getting wet. <laughs> it's seriously, you know, and, I, and, 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 and uh, Pastor Ralph did an excellent job when she was teaching on the baptism because. Uh, Baptism don't save you. Baptism doesn't assure 
your salvation. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, then you'll be saved. But so, so just getting wet and greasy because you got oil now, that ain't gonna do it. You gotta, you gotta go all in for him, man. Amen. All right. So, Father God, thank you for your peace, your presence. Thank you for your purpose being manifested in this place. Father God, thank you for each and every man, woman, and child that's under the sound of my voice. Lord, that you uh, clear the hearts, clear the ears, get rid of all of the fogginess, get rid of all of the delays, get rid of all of the deception, get rid of all of the selfish and self righteousness so that we can hear what you would have to say today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, look at somebody and say, you ready? ready? Can you see me? Can you see me? <laughs> Turn to Matthew 14. You, you stop the music all together. Amen. My man, 100 grand. Hey, Julius. Julius. We're going to have a conversation. Matthew 14. So last week we were talking about eyes to see, right? This week we're talking about eyes to see because there's more to see. It's, like I said, there's always more to attain. There's always more to get. How much do we want it? Oh. We say yeah, we, we say, yeah, I want it all, but then but then in getting it and, and, and going after it all, it's gonna take some stuff. It's going to take some bonafide effort on your part. It takes effort to seek God. But it don't take no effort for him to do what he want to do for us. Come on, man. Matthew 14. Check this out. Ah. When we pray over the emerged children, that they'll receive the word. Elias is preaching today and whatever he the Lord will lead him to say he'll say so receive the word from the small prophet Amen. in Jesus name Amen Amen Alright so Matthew 14 I'm going to start in verse 14 it says in Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place and the multitude is now past. And the time is now past, sorry. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, they need not depart, give ye them to eat. And they said, say unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, bring it here. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled and they looked and they took up of the fragments that remained 12 baskets full. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men besides. So, you know, you hear people say, man, Jesus fed the 5,000. The Bible says right here, there was 5,000 men and beside the men, women and children. So, you know, I like to use my spiritual imagination. So there was 5,000 men using my spiritual imagination. Let's say half of them was married. But now that makes 7,500 people. And then let's just say half of them had kids, right? So half of 2,500 is 1,175. Am I right? Am I close? Come on, you, you know. You. All right, so she said, yeah, there. But anyway, let's just say that it, so half of them, half of the married people had, had at least one child. Well, now, man, we in the range of 9,000 people. And that's just taking a minimum. Because we got one, 
two, three, four. Strong man in here. Right? So out of these men that's in here, two thirds of us have kids. There's only one that's without one. So you get, you get, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that to say that you can almost assume that if it was all these men there and their wives had, had to be there, some of them was married and they had kids. I was just trying to paint a simple picture so you can see where I'm going. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain of a park to pray. He always going to park to pray by himself. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the wind, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. The fourth watch of the night, that's like midnight. That's like midnight. Midnight. I was in the military. You had mid watch. That was like the fourth hour. The last hour, which some people thought it was the first hour. But that was from midnight to four in the morning, right? And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. And straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not, be, be not afraid. And Peter answered him, it's, I know I'm reading a lot, but this is we, we sometimes we skip past stuff. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if, if, it be, if, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. And said unto him, O thou little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? With eyes to see. I, reading the scripture is a clear reminder to us from the bread and the fish to the sea. Right? It's all how we see things, our perspective. So we can read all of that and say, the disciples are like, man, what is this? A couple of fishes? I mean, that, that's like, that's, a, that's, a, that's an Eminem meal right there for me, right? For me alone. I mean, I don't want that much bread. Give me more, give me more fishes. Right? And, and then it's like, what is this? It was how they were seeing it. Jesus saw it totally different. They saw it as this ain't gonna be a number. You see all of these people, and you talking about this right here. Then it said he blessed it. He blessed it. Yeah. Father God, we, we pray. We pray the blessing of our food, right? Or bless this food. The, the old prayer. Uh, what's the old prayer that we that we had to learn? Uh, Lord, thank you for the food I'm about to receive. Come on, somebody help me. Y'all ain't y'all remember y'all said it. In our survival. No, that's the one I taught you. <laughs> like he, he remembered what I taught you. What are you no. saying? God is gracious, God is good. God is gracious, God is good. Uh, Let us thank him for this fruit. By our hands, we must be fed. Give us Lord our daily bread. Yes. Right? Yes. So that's the blessing we pray over the fruit. But think about it. That prayer that was taught to us is in Matthew, it says, give us the, 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 the Lord's prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. He ain't talking about no food. He ain't talking about no food. He's not talking about no food. The daily bread he's talking about is the spiritual substance that we get to manage each day. And to get through each day. So what God had to protect you from, keep you from, it, and hold you from yesterday ain't going to be the same today. So every day you're asking for the daily bread. They ain't tried me today. They did because I told them off yesterday. Right. Well, no, yesterday God kept you from punching me in the face, even though you told them about yourself. Today it's like, Lord, 
give me my daily bread. You know, yesterday I was gonna punch him and you kept me. Today, I don't even want to say nothing. The daily bread. <laughs> how we do we want the daily bread? And it's all about our perspective and how we see things. But if we don't got eyes to see, we won't see, right? Right? Then you go down and you see that the, the he said straightway, 22, and he straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples and told them to go to the other side. It, all that matters to me is Jesus said, go. That's it. And if you, been, if you was reading through the, the, the bookmark, Luke 8, that was our scripture for this past week. That was kind of all he said. He just go. He ain't concerned about it. Look, God already knows what's ahead. He knows the end from the beginning, the wrong. And he knows that the beginning from the end, he knows it all and everything that's in between. So Jesus didn't tell him to go just to go. He told him to go. He already knew the storm was going to happen. He already knew he was going to... Another, another part, in Luke 8, actually, he says, people came and it was like, well, remember he told his disciples to go, but how did he get over here? It's... Jesus is like, okay, go. That's it. And, and we, but we'll get concerned about how, when, who, what. We, all these other things seem to come to our mind. And, and, and if, it, if, if he tells you to go and do something that just doesn't look comfortable, you really like, well, I don't know about this. But But it wasn't for this. Many people, I wrote this down for a whole other piece that I'm working on for later, but it, it fits right here. Many people are so focused on hearing God's voice experientially that they stop caring if it's even biblical. I know that sounds deep. And people are like, what is that deep? Because, you know, we got all of these Voices. You got all these voices. You got your voice. You got your flesh. You got your feelings. You got your mama's voice. You got your daddy's voice. You got the spirit of God's voice. You got the devil's and the demon's voice. All these voices. And so many people have ex experientially meaning they try to mimic and act like. So you start talking to yourself enough you start thinking that it's God. Come on, Come on. For real. Yeah. And then you, you just, man, and then you don't even say stuff just relative to the Bible. But it's his word. It's the word. That was that was a plug, as I would say. Right? Mm -hmm. So he said, go to the other side. It doesn't matter what any that all I said, all Jesus said was go. It don't matter what it look like. It don't matter how you see it. It don't matter how you feel. If he said, just go, just go. Because then you're right, you're going. It's like, God told me to go do this. So, who is it? If God told you to do it, does it matter that it's 17 feet of snow outside? Yes, but that'll stop you. But, you know, uh, I know God told me to do it, but you know, the, the situations and, and it just don't look safe. When did God tell you to do something that was safe? Because mm. <laughs> he's not going to tell you to do, because safety is just comfort. And I understand that, you know, that, that his word brings comfort and all of that. I get that. But God don't want us to be comfortable. Because you know, once you get comfortable, you get complacent. And once you get complacent, right behind that comes compromise. And then when compromise come, oh, chaos is, hey, yo, party over here. So why would I want to be comfortable? Even when God says, say some things, some things just don't, I'm like, man, I don't want to say that, man, I don't want to hurt their feelings. So, okay, so you, so Paul and them, they was like, okay, in the book of Acts, Paul said, okay, I'd rather obey God. 
I'd rather obey God than to obey man. So it's like, okay, so, and that didn't feel good telling nobody that. That didn't say, you know, what about their feelings? What about them? What about their feelings? Did they care about your feelings when they said what they said? No. Oh, wow. But we always consider how they feel. Uh -oh. Especially if God said do it. Right? In the times that we're in, especially right now, where's our focus? How are we seeing things? Are we allowing, I know the, the, the world and the culture they use, are we allowing a narrative to be painted for us or are we allowing God's word to be the narrative that we live by? It's like, well, how they see things is not the way that God sees things. Because God, God, God said in Isaiah, right? My, Isaiah 55, my thoughts is higher than your thoughts. My ways is higher than your ways. Did didn't, didn't you know what he turned, turned around and said to that? Take my thoughts. Take my ways. God is like, hey, I'm giving you free will, but at the same time, I'm giving you the options to choose. To go look at Deuteronomy 30, it says, it says man, he says, I set before you Death and life. Secret. Choose life. Amen. This is what he does. <laughs> and it's like, but then there's so many people that's choosing death. I mean, when I'm saying death, they're choosing a simple life. Choosing a life separated from God. Right? Hey, Joshua 1. This book of the law should not depart out of your mouth. But yet, our mouths, like James said it, over in James, he said, you can tame a, a horse, you can tame an animal, you can tame all of these different people, and all these different animals, rather, not people, excuse me. He said, like, but you can't even tame your own tongue. And then Pro Proverbs says, life and death is in the what? The power of the tongue. And it, But see, we, we use that part of the scripture, like we do. We do. We get that part that's good for us, but then we forget the second part of it. Because the second part of it, and those that do what they do with it will eat the fruit thereof. So if I'm speaking life, then I'm going to be eating life. Mm -hmm. If I'm speaking death, I, no, 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 no. I do not, you already heard me say, I don't care about positives and negatives. People talk about positive energy and negative energy. Okay, you sound like you're talking about a battery. <laughs> Real talk. Cause just think about it. Think about think about the things that Jesus right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Right here. Let's just think right here, right, right here. Peter said, "Lord, if that's you, let me come out there with you." He said, "Come on." Peter started walking. Orca, Jaws, Flipper, Piranha, all of them started coming out. And Peter, man, all this stuff going on, and he began to sing. And, 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 and then what did Jesus say? We're, we're the little faith. Because stuff was happening. Right? So, so look, that right there, well, you think you is talking about I ain't got no faith. And now bring that to today's time. And Jesus walking around saying some of the stuff he said. Man, I can't listen to that Jesus do it. He's so negative. Y'all feel me? Why I don't get caught in positives and negative spirits? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? First I say energies, then I say spirits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, don't want, I don't want the negative spirits up around me. Well, Jesus would have had a negative spirit in today's time. Just so would John. So would Paul. Mm -hmm. If they call in the things that the world says that's good, fine, and dandy, and then they calling it out and speaking to it, it be, because the world is rolling with it, and yeah, these people coming and speaking against it, they make it. You feel me? So it's like, what? He said, you ain't that Peter. And this ain't the, look, he, he was always checking Peter. Who do men say that I am? 
Well, some say, the disciples say, some say, I are Elias or another prophet. He said, well, who do you say that I am? And then they said, Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And then you go know, later on, in the same chapter, oh, yeah. later on, they moving on, they moved on, they had breakfast, and now they moved on, they, they had lunch, and now it's dinner time. And Jesus said, okay, man, while we sitting here, let me go ahead and share some stuff with y'all. Um, I'm going to end up dying. I'm going to have to end up giving my life over. He's talking about later on in the same day. Right? He said, I'm going to have to give my life up, man. And, you know, it, it may not be what y'all like or whatever. And Peter said, no, you ain't. You ain't. They ain't nobody going to touch you. And they ain't going to do it. And you know what he turned around and said to Peter? His, his disciple. His right-hand man. He said, get behind me, Satan. No, my homeboy. No, forget that. My family member. He called him, because you're the devil. First thing, oh, you think you better than somebody. No. Did, did, did Peter didn't respond like that? Peter was like, oh my gosh, I allowed myself to slip in. I allow myself to get in the way. And how, how many times we allow ourselves to get in the way? Mm -hmm. Oh, God, it's like, this is it right here. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. Yeah. So as long as, look, as long as we're walking and following Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit's instruction, we will stay afloat. But the moment that we stop listening to the Holy Spirit, Jesus and God, we're going to start sinking. Now, it's different if you if you already drowning and God saves you. He said, okay, you're drowning. You're head in. I mean, the water is above your head. You're deep in it. And then God saves you and delivers you out of it. Why would you go jump back in there? That's absolutely stupid. It's like, man, God saved me. God delivered me. God healed me. God made me whole. Well, why would I put myself in a position of going back? I mean, and then we're like, well, God help me. And God is like, okay, I'll help you. Once again, He's doing what you want to do. And, and at first you said, you heard me tell you. Right. And then you did what I told you. You saw how that worked out. And then you stopped listening because you started doing stuff on your own. Okay. And now you're back at square one. Right here. I was like, no, you need to you need to locate yourself all over again. You trying to go out? You trying to go from here to San Diego, California, without a GPS? Good luck. <laughs> but you know what? Because all they did was burn up on the map. Because they said we was destroying the trees. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. <laughs> you ain't gonna run out of trees. Look at all these neighborhoods that they been tore down. That used to be a field or 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 forest, and they put all these houses. Is there still trees? Because trees produce oxygen. You still breathing? I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like, God is like, you, you can't destroy my earth. Only I can do that. That's right. <laughs> Praise the Lord, man. I tell you that this morning, man, I've been preaching since 7 o'clock this morning. I ain't tired. And I got to go preach again at 2 o'clock. I love it. Right? Mm -hmm. The storms of life is gonna happen. Which are where your focus is gonna be? Seriously? Where your focus is gonna be? The storms of life are going to happen. If you want to know about the storms of life, go check it out on the YouTube channel. I did two series called The Storms of Life or Life Storms. Mm -hmm. And it talks about all the stuff that we go through. See, that we go to, but we won't go through. Because you won't break through until you break through. 
You can get right to what is, what's the old saying? You can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. I can lead a person to Jesus, but I can't make them accept it. I can lead a person to salvation, but I can't make them accept it. I can lead a person to deliverance, but I can't make them get delivered. Right? Mm -hmm. You can take a person, I, I mean, I know somebody personally. Just, just to let you know how once you take your eyes off Jesus, you can sink further than you were. You might have been in the eight feet when you were sinking at first. And then Jesus saved you. So now you're above the eight feet. But then you start tripping, slipping, dipping, tripping, and all of that, right? And, and not getting equipped with the word of God. And then so, so now, now you ain't you ain't just you ain't just sinking in the eight feet, you sinking in the 80 feet. Right? Because they, they, they when, when you look, you read the word. Again, I always tell you I'm not a theologian. The scriptures that have come up, come up, a lot of times I'm speaking the word. And I'm like, oh, baby, you know, what's that reference? Write it down and go search it out. But Jesus cast out, there's a demon that was cast out, and the demon was walking around. See, the demon was just walking around. He was cast out of the man, and the demon, the demon, just walking around trying to find an empty home. And then he said, "Oh, that person I got cast out of, they ain't following God no more. They empty again." And yep, yeah, so so the so the demon of addiction got cast out. Then you had he, he walking around, still trying to find another crib, another crib, a body. Exactly. Because demons can't exist without a body. They exist, but they have to have a body. They have to. They have to. I seen the demon. You did? What was he in? Now you seen a spirit. There's a difference between a demon and a spirit. <laughs> Follow me. Right? So he, he, the demon, the demon of addiction got cast out. I'm using an example. And he walking around and it's like, oh, wow. They've been free for 13 years. Oh, but now they decided to take a sip. And hey, yo, confusion, chaos, deceitfulness, craziness, lust, envy, anger. Come on, y'all. That's an empty house. And then it says, that person, the demon came back with seven more. Remember, you, you got saved from the eight feet. And now, when you walk away from taking, take your focus off of Jesus, you're down in the 80 feet. It's, all that's saying is, there's more. Right. So now, the next time it's going to be, it's so hard to keep going. It's so hard because more demons came. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's hard to get along. And so now you got to now. Now it's like now it's like you're going through the drawer at your house <laughs> because you got to get all of these things off. All of these things gotta go. It's like, I don't know why I can't do any better. Just keep digging. Keep digging. Keep going in the drawer. And then eventually you're gonna get to the bottom of the drawer. And there ain't gonna be nothing there. And there ain't gonna be no demons inside no more. There's no one, there's not gonna be any the evil spirits are not gonna stop. Seriously. They ain't stopped since Jesus. The Antichrist is an evil spirit. And they say the spirit of the Antichrist is even in the earth now. That's in first job. Even now, and people don't even see it. Right? People are the is it uh, uh, first, first Thessalonians, second Thessalonians? It says in their last days there's gonna be a great falling away. I mean, the people are gonna walk away from Jesus, people are gonna walk away from being saved. What? Are you kidding me? The Bible says it's God's will that no man should perish. It didn't say what nobody gonna perish. Oh, that's good. It says it's God's will that no man should perish. God don't want people to perish. But remember, God is not gonna override your will just for his will unless you're tuned to his will and then you're forsaking your own will. Because why would he say, I set before you? Mm -hmm. Like I'm giving you an option. Right? right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's not, the, the, the church is yours. 
Don't be the black sheep. <laughs> that was a song from back in the day. Like, you can get with this, you can get with that. That was my black sheep. Don't be a black sheep. <laughs> That's true. Hallelujah. Oh, man, I got to watch the time, man, because we got to eat and go south. Right? Situations and circumstances and conditions are, are going to look unfavorable, but God. Seriously, if you turn to first turn to first Corinthians chapter two, you get that inside. It's like when situations and circumstances are looking unfavorable, but God, All right? I heard we say it last week. You got to see beyond what you're looking at. It's deeper. You ever? Uh, <laughs> We we all probably have those of us. Everybody in here drives, so it's like, man, I they just cut look, they just cut me off for no reason. Uh, First Corinthians chapter two. They just cut me off for no reason. No, they got a reason. You just didn't know it. <laughs> they was either in a rush, they was thinking about themselves, or they thought they can get in. They got a reason. You just didn't know it. But our, 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 we will say, man, he just, he, he just cut me off for no reason. I don't know where this came from. It came from nowhere. No, it came from somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's just you wouldn't be paying attention. Right. And that's just how the enemy gets us. To pay attention. He said, if I can get you to look over here, then I can sneak this other stuff in over here. Oh. If I can get you to listen to this, then I can sneak. See, because you listen to what with both your ears, right? But in one of the ears, you're, you're more attentive. Don't you just think that one of your ears seem like this? If you put your little uh, uh, AirPods in, you usually put the one in, the one that you're comfortable with, and two, the one that you think that you hear better in. Yeah. You feel me? Like he, he, he got his and he, he got it in his right ear because he's not comfortable with it in his left, or he feel like, oh, hear real clear on my left. So all, I'm, I'm saying that to say you're giving your ear attention to something primarily, but what you listen to primarily is spitting something out to come around. <sighs> so you, you sit here and say, I got my, look, I told y'all, man, I, I was a hood dude. I was a street dude. And, and Cash used to say, man, I keep my ear to the concrete. Well, I got one ear to the concrete, trying to hear what's happening in the streets to stay up with the news. But then something else is still coming in over here. Right. What are we allowing to sneak in? It says the thief comes not but to steal. A thief ain't gonna say, hey yo, Victoria, tonight about 1037, I'm gonna come through the south window. I'm going to raise it up just a little bit on the back side of the house so I can come in and steal the TV off the wall. Because <laughs> if you knew that, you'd be sitting there like, <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. Come on through the window. You feel me? You'll be prepared for the thief to come and steal if he announced he was coming to steal. The devil's not announcing it. He's sneaking in. Subtly, he, he was doing, he been, he, but his game is the same. Yeah. He subtly rolled up on Eve. This is the enemy game, so the serpent was subtle and wiser. Right. And he snuck on in. He ain't changing. He finding other ways to sneak in music, TV, social media, he, whatever way he can sneak in. He's like, man, I'm taking the sneakiest route. <laughs> 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 and it's usually the route that we're not even thinking be coming through. Because if you knew that the thief was coming, hey, I, I, I got something for him. Go ahead. Show up. You went to 32. You went to 22. You went to 38. You went to 357. Or you went to 22 rifle. Right? I just gave y'all my, my whole arsenal at home. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you want? Oh, and then I got a machine. A real one. The kind you might have seen on TV. 
For real. Like, like, and, and, and oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it 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 it, 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 took, it 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 took down some trees in his lifetime with a couple of hacks. <laughs> and it's sharp. And even though it took down the trees, you don't get a resharp. Right? But if it's the deep announcing how you coming, you're gonna be ready. Then they say put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand. Against the fiery darts of the enemy, the enemy just ain't shooting no darts. The same one that's like yeah. some of my some of my arsenal and artillery, they ain't shooting just bullets. They shoot hollow points. They shoot bumblebees. You know, I never heard of them. Let me go way back. Bumblebees make hollow points they look like butter knives. But but look, the bumblebee, what do you think about a bumblebee? Man, it's gonna sting me. Yeah, it's gonna sting every artery in you. And I let me just get you in your foot. That's it. I'm gonna just stand back and watch you bleed out. <laughs> no, but seriously, the enemy, that's how he come in, man. He's whatever way is easiest, whatever way is tackled, whatever way we're not looking at. So we, if we have eyes to see spiritually, we can, the Bible says do not be ignorant of Satan's devices. What? <laughs> Satan's devices. Yeah. Satan's devices. Yeah. Satan's devices. Yeah. I'm not saying that's all demonic, but I'm just saying don't be ignorant of it. Because these are the things he's using. Yeah. Satan's devices. Seriously. I tell you, one of the biggest device, that's one of the biggest devices he's using right now. And people are so stupid to it. This is one of the biggest devices he's using right now. At least four of us that's in here are a result of a white man saving a black man. When white people talking to black people was against the law, especially in Virginia. Lynchburg, wow, Lynchburg. Yeah. Seriously? At least four of us in here are a result of that. If that never would have happened, I, I, I wouldn't know y'all four. Y'all four wouldn't be here, and I wouldn't know none of y'all other people. Y'all wouldn't be married. You wouldn't see me as your pastor. <laughs> you wouldn't have said pastor, you did the sermon, but none of that. Seriously. Yeah. That's how far I be looking at stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, but well, that's a good enough reason for me not to look at somebody of a lighter hue crazy. That's just enough for me. Everybody else say, well, times have changed. No, they ain't. Spirits changed. He just coming in a different form. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> so St. Corinthians 2. I know it took me a while to get there. I went around 270. It's all right, though. It's cool. Check this out. Verse 9. It says, but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God have prepared for them that love him. But God have revealed them unto us by what? Spirit. His spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yeah, the deep things of God. But what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man? Remember all those voices I was saying? You got to let the spirit of God speak, right? Mm -hmm. The spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but by the spirit of God. Seriously, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it's a spiritual thing that's going on. I had a song years ago. It was on my first, on my first, back then you didn't have EPs, LPs. It was on my first CD. It was called Warfare. It was based off of 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It said, there's a war going on in my mind. Which would I choose, either to live or to die? Life is much better. 
because I live my life for Christ. Yet I'm battling warfare because there's a war in my mind. Mm. Those were the, the that was the, the hook or the chorus to the song. Mm -hmm. There's a war going on. It's a spiritual battle, but we make it so natural. We make it, we make it natural. And he said, I have not seen. Mm -hmm. Ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for him that believes him and know him and love him. If we could really tap into what God wants to do, man, we would say the scripture, the Lord can do exceedingly abundantly above all the nice thing. My God says, supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But you can't even see it. Because you just consume with yourself. Me, baby. It's all about me. Pride was the thing that got Satan kicked out. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Isaiah, Eddie, Ezekiel, Ed, Jeremiah all talked about it. He said, I will exalt, Isaiah 14, I will exalt myself against God. I will know this. I will know. Now think about that. Look how. Look how shifty, crafty, and sneaky the devil is. If the devil, the angel, God created all things, angels and everything, can we agree? Yeah. Right? It's in, in, in Lucifer, right? Was in heaven. Mm -hmm. We agree to that. Yeah. But Lucifer was so slick with his tongue, he was able to twist and turn and trick a third of the angels that God created. Mm -hmm. So where do you think you got a chance? Right. I'm just asking the question. <laughs> that's right. For real. It's like, how could I stand the chance against somebody that's so shifty, so crafty, and so sneaky that he even changed the angels' minds to come against God? You ain't never thought about nothing like that. But that's what really happened. A third of the angels decided to say, man, this is a good spot. But hey, Lucifer did the same thing with him that he did with Jesus. He said, look, you bow down to me. I give you all this. Right? You, 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 we can all heard the term, the person would say, you sold your soul to the devil. Yeah. Because he did the same thing. He ain't changed. He was doing that. He did it in heaven. And he definitely doing it in earth. And people are beguiled by that. He, if he can, seriously, just, just if, if you can just think about that, he was able to take a third of the angelic powers that God created and had them turn against God. That is like, what's the emoji? <laughs> That's like mind blowing. For real. Like this dude was able, now, now, now think about it, they're in heaven. God, God knows everything, right? Mm -hmm. So God probably just sitting back like, okay. You just see, I mean, I, I kind of know what's going to happen anyway. I mean, he created Judas, Judas for a reason. And you know when he created Satan or Lucifer, he knew what was going to go down. We don't even be thinking about stuff like that, man. Yeah. I know, I know that's deep, but he just said the deep things he's only revealed and shown by the Spirit of God. That's what we just got that read, right? So I, sometimes I'd be here and be like, man, you just deep. I'd be like, no, no, it ain't really deep. It's really surface. Yeah. It's really on the surface. Because it's really, you, you ain't got to get deep with that. That's just real talk. That's just a third decided to say, man, we're going to buck God's system. We're going to rebel against God. God said, okay. But, but just like y'all human beings, I'm human beings. To God said, y'all. But just like us human beings, right? If we want to kick somebody out, sometimes they just ain't going to go. They're going to put up a fight. Mm -hmm. Lucifer and his angels put up a fight. 
Because the Bible says the earth was without form and void. See, I'm getting deep again, right? <laughs> but Lucifer had already got kicked out. When God said, let there be light, because the earth was, he, he, he just wasn't going. I'm just saying, because he said he was going to take over what God was doing, right? He said he was going to take God's kingdom from him, right? This is what he's saying in heaven. You think he just bounced? Just say lie, as they were saying. Say lie. Think about that. Pause. Calmly think about that. That's, deep. that's that's so shallow, it's deep. A third, he was able to trick. What do you think he can do to humanity? He's doing it. And people are still oblivious to it. We we had counted off and say, this is, well, you know, oh, he's a nice guy. We read Psalm 23 at the funeral, and he just got done killing somebody last night. Real talk. Would you come in, read Psalm 23 at the funeral, and mom on the news? I'm, I'm not talking about nobody specific, but you just look through history. Even when I was tripping, slipping, dipping, puffing, look, puffing, cuffing, and doing nothing, I, I was kind of like, man, that dude ain't right. And here I am. He ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> that don't make no sense, right? I told you, I'm a, look, I, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you two, three points. And, and I'm going to tell you this quick story. I'm gonna make, I'm, the story is going to be real short. How, how am I driving down Main Street with Pastor Val before salvation even happened, before accepting Jesus? Literally, like, literally like uh, a week before. I got saved. We right right here, right here on Main Street, going to a, a cabaret. I'm puffing a blunt with, with a black, with a, literally with a glass of gin like this, with nothing but ice in it, and a car phone. See, so some of y'all is car phone. Yeah, a big old car phone. So the kind of car phone you can plug into your cigarette lighter, unplug it, and carry it around. Uh -huh. Yeah, you never remember your bike. And I had an eighty, I had an eighty-six Park Avenue with troops and bulbs on it, with a block on system, <laughs> and I'm getting blow driving around right down Main Street, going east, and the car in front of me is swerving. I picked up the, the cell phone, the car, the car phone. I called the police. Yeah, this dude in front of me, man. <laughs> How stupid is that? Seriously, he's swerving in front of me. And the police officer, we have a car. Well, where are you at? I said, we're going down. I'm going down Main Street. We're coming up on Barnett. I'm telling him everything. And we're coming up on Barnett. He's still going, but he's swerving, man. That was before the Walmart and all of that was over there. It was just a, that used to be Lacey Skating Ring. Come on, y'all. I've been around. <laughs> but I was just like, I was like, we, I was like, we're passing up uh Beachwood now. I'm, I'm talking to them. And they're like, we got we got a guy. I mean, this is before 911 and all that craziness, right? I mean, it was 911, but it was like, eh, 911 was a joke, like Flavor Flavor said way back then. Right? But it, it was, it, it was you, the officers, they would be um, readily available back then. Now it's just like, well, he called the police an hour and a half ago. And he had to wait till he got done with Dunkin' and Donuts. <laughs> and then he had to make sure that his mistress was fine. He said, I'm telling you, I'll be seeing it in the spirit. When I'll be seeing it, I'll be like, ah. Yeah. But I just be proud of him. Who calls the police on somebody and you got all the stuff in the car that can get you charged? <laughs> and I mean, I didn't, just, I didn't just ride around by myself then. I had, it was me, Pastor Brown, Smith, and Wesson. <laughs> with, 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 a, with, a, with a bag, a box of the Phillies, a, a, a gallon, a half gallon. I used to be a lush. Lush! 
Lush. <laughs> These are sitting there. Come on, man. Tell you, man, that's crazy. Who would drink that? Man, me and my brother just sit down there, man, and, 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 and drink a half a fifth of moonshine. Larry. <laughs> And, and look, why are we why are we still why are we still puffing and getting high and playing Madden, Sega Genesis at the time? That was it was wow. But who does that? And then you're gonna say somebody else is tripping, right? So let me give you these. Let me give you these couple. Cause we gotta we gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. Turn to Second Corinthians chapter four, one page over. First Corinthians chapter, no, Second Corinthians chapter four. I said one page over. No, and it's a couple pages over. It's like the next book, right? Second Corinthians chapter four, right? We just got done reading. We said eyes have not seen, neither ear heard, neither have it into their heart. The man will not prepare for them that love them. So you can't see it, you can't hear it, unless you know you love it. Because God loved all of us. He, the Bible said He loved us first. Mm -hmm. Let somebody tell you they love you first. You're gonna be second thinking. You're gonna be second thinking it like, hey, do they really love me? Are they just saying it to get what they want? You know, you go through all of these processes. If somebody just you've been dating somebody six, seven, eight months, a year. In a year, you convince when they say they love you because they've been around for a year. But in, in 90 days, you know when you love me? What, what you want? <laughs> Seriously, you step back like what you want? What you what you in this for? Especially me, the one of y'all gave up the goodies. <laughs> and it's like, you talking about you love me? Huh? You say that because you want something. I ain't got no money. You just got some ice cream and cake. <laughs> <laughs> My fellas caught that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so check this out. Second Corinthians 4. That's where y'all at, right? Yes. Uh, uh, verse... 13. We're going to read this and we, we got the roll. We, verse, verse 13, we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up G the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes. What are our things for? For your sakes. That the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of men be redoubled to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. Don't quit. Don't quit. But through our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Remember that? Give us today our daily bread. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See how it ties right there? This is what the, the word ties itself together. I don't have to do it, I just present it. Right? For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. How long is the affliction? Worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. So the affliction is coming to work something out within me if I allow it to have its work within me. You can look at Romans 5. It says, patience is it's talking about all these things that need to work in our life. And we need to let, let's say, let patience have its perfect work. If I ain't perfect, Pastor. We all make mistakes. Let patience have its perfect work. So why do you work something that's perfect in your life for you not to be perfect in that area? <laughs> I clap for myself. It's okay. Because <laughs> seriously, because that's what we hear. Ain't nobody perfect, right? Really? He said, be ye holy as I am holy. Be ye perfect as I am perfect. But we say, ain't nobody perfect. That's what people say. That's what people do. That's how people are. Ain't nobody perfect. Really? Ain't Jesus, you ain't walking on water. I get that. But if Jesus came out here and told me to go walk on the water, I'll go walk on the water. Because he said it. The rest don't matter. You feel me? 
So the affliction is for how long? Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate it. And it working in us for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal or subject to change. Give me that in your message Bible, son, please. But the things which are, are not seen are eternal. So the stuff that we can look at, y'all looking at me, I can change. I'm looking at you, you can change. I didn't come in here next week, go pay somebody and get a whole horse. For real, it can change, right? Yes. But he said, we don't look at the things that are seen. We look at the things that are not seen. The things that are not seen are eternal. Are eternal. You can't see your eternity. You can't see your salvation. But you can see somebody tripping. You can see somebody that you want to cuss them out. You're giving people a piece of your mind. Mm -hmm. You need to go back and revisit them and say, can I get that back? Right. <laughs> For real. You will get somebody a piece of your mind and then you say, I, I got to get my mind right. You can't get it right because you gave them a piece. Exactly. So now I got to go back and make peace so I can get that piece. Yeah, exactly. All right, I'm just saying. Come on. Hey. <laughs> Look, it says right here. These hard times are small potatoes compared to what's coming in the good times. The lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow, but the things we can't see now will last forever. Oh, Why we look better at the things that are seen? You know, look Okay, y'all, you, me, like right now, I'm looking. Here he is. See, he always makes his grand entrance at the right time. I was about to use him as an example. It's like, I was about to say, just like Tobias, we looking at him right now. But he's going to change. Right? We look at, I, I say it, y'all can't say it. I look at my, my great nephew. I still got a picture. When, I, when he had on my dark brown Kango hat when we were at Walnut Ridge. I got the picture with, me, with him holding. I can't hold him up with me right now. <laughs> <laughs> For real. I mean, I can pick him up, but it ain't like I'm going to be right there in the picture like I was holding him like this and we was playing. No. I'm going to get out of boy. You too heavy. <laughs> you hurt my heart. But, I mean, you know what I'm saying? He changed. We changed. I used to be 135 pounds, like forever. And then it was like, well, you know, I asked myself, what happened? You gained 40 pounds. I can't tell you gained 40 pounds off of me. Yeah, I did. 135 is all you gotta do. Most people, you can either look right around here or look right here. <laughs> you can see the change. And some people, you can look right here. But that stuff is temporary. It's going to change. And it's, we can't look at it. Don't, don't look at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. Because the stuff that we look at is temporary. It's subject to change. And it says, it's, it's only for a minute. It's here today. If the last time I read someone say it's, 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 it's here today and gone tomorrow, when it says in James, the life is but a vapor. Seriously, we can walk out of here today and God and God look, don't we can't blame God, especially if we ain't right with God. Right. There's so many people that blame God for stuff, and God's like, I ain't gonna do it that way. I wasn't an accessory, I wasn't part of the plan. I'm innocent, and you can't prove me guilty. God's like, I ain't gonna do it with that. But you know, Lord, why'd you let this happen? You're like, I ain't let that happen. You just put yourself in a position where you put yourself in a position. All right, so here, here's, here's, here's the four points for today. I just got a whole lot of points for today. You're just paying attention. All right. 
but our, our commitment to Christ, our commitment to his church, and our commitment to this journey, we cannot be wavering and be double-minded about. Right? We can't be double-minded. James 1 says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We wonder why something why why it's not stable with our spiritual walk. We wonder what we're doing. Remember, I, I said it earlier. Or I had the foundation. I said the practical things that we're supposed to do that we don't do they make a spiritual difference. Man, somebody said, "Man, these preachers don't believe in this deliverance stuff." I was like, "Yeah, I believe in deliverance. I really do. I just don't believe that everything, as far as deliverance, will have a person." Wailed over and, and spitting up. Can that happen? Yes. Am I against that? No. As long as that's what it calls, but I'm not going to be double minded about it because that's going to make me unstable over here. If I'm double minded about uh, my children, it's gonna make me. It's gonna make me an unstable manager at work. This is just a double-minded man is unstable. It was talking about being one with Christ, and it says if you double-minded, right a little bit. Right, they said, man, don't. Right before that, he said, man, if, if you lack what it sometimes got, he gonna give it to you freely. And then he says, don't waver. So you can't, once you're double-minded about God in one way, you're double-minded about God in every way. Well, can God do this? Well, that just makes you unstable over here. For real. It's like, man, there's nothing impossible with God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can't be double-minded when it comes to Jesus Christ, when it comes to the church, and when it comes to going on this journey. With, I can't be double-minded about my own life. And then, then, you know, you have to have accountability to Christ, to his church. And you have to hold yourself accountable. Because if I don't hold myself, I hold myself accountable. I, I surround myself with men or fellas. I surround myself with men that will challenge me to go to the next level. That I can call and I can say, no, man. And all of them ain't pastors. Like, yeah, man, what's, what's your thoughts on this? Right? And that's Proverbs 15. It says, He that refuses the instruction despises his own soul. So if you don't want to listen, and you think you got it all together, you just cut yourself short. And I realize that there's safety in a multitude of counsel. I mean, I understand that, look, it ain't safe. We went to, we, my son joined me yesterday and a couple other fellas. We went to a men's uh, breakfast fellowship. It was powerful. It was real good. It was men from various churches around this city. And it was like, no, there's safety in a multitude of counsel. I wasn't going there to see no, I was just going because it, uh, Reverend G said, come on through, man. We have an immense fellow. So I, so I beat it. I'm trying to get a couple of fellows to come. We went, and I was like, man, this is good. I didn't go in with judgment, with a judgmental spirit, or, or looking at these guys older than me, younger than me. I know. I, I went in there, and I was like, man, this is good. And I took some things from it because I was taking notes. And different guys, young and old, were speaking out, saying things, of course, relative to the Bible. And if it wasn't relative to the Bible, I, I probably, myself, was there, I probably was the first one to have a rebuttal. For real, because it got to be around the word. You know, if somebody says, well, you know, one of the things that, that happened, and it was Pastor D told me later on, he's like, man, you started that. I was like, I didn't start that. It was, I ain't in no trouble. <laughs> but the dude said, I ain't going to have this type of person or that type of person. I was like, really? But check out Paul. 
And we look at Paul for really who he was. And it ain't too many preachers that can preach on a Sunday morning, a Wednesday night, a Thursday night, a Friday night, a Saturday night, or Monday night or Tuesday night. It ain't too many preachers that can preach a sermon without using something that Paul wrote. Right? And Paul, you're talking about the one that was killing Christians. You're talking about the one that said, I'm the chiefest, meaning I'm the head sinner. I'm the one that sinned the most. None of y'all sinned as much as me. That ain't something we compare to people. That's what we do. Well, he committed that sin. At least I didn't do that. Paul said, no, no, no. Even that, I'm above all that. And this, and this dude... <laughs> What if Ananias, you know, y'all can read the account. I'm, I'm capsulizing it. It's in Acts chapter 9. I believe it's in Acts 22 as well. But Acts chapter 9, he said, uh, well, the, the, he was blinded by he was blinded by Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God. They got him on the road to Damascus. He fell down. He said, Who are you, Lord? He said, Hey, yeah, Jesus, the one you've been persecuting, the one that you've been cutting up. You've been dogging my church. Why do you, why are you dogging my people? Oh, what would you have me to do? He said, look, listen, listen. Paul said, what do you want me to do? He said, well, go over here and see Ananias. He will tell you what to do. And then God told that Ananias, who was one of his disciples, one of his preachers, he said, there's one coming. Saul. He said, he saw. You don't know when we kill people? <laughs> you talking about the one that was, one that was having, after me in my church? That don't even sound right. Do it. And he said, yeah, that's the one you're going to lay your hands on and the scales are going to fall on his eyes. You're going to heal it. Uh, and Paul, and, and, and I said, Lord, I don't know about all that. This dude, he, he, I, he might try to kill me right now. And he, he and I just ended up praying because that's what God told him to do. See, he could have been looking at it. That's one of the things I brought up yesterday. I was like, it doesn't matter who the person was or what their background is. I said it in a different way, but I can say it here. I said, I wouldn't listen to none of y'all <laughs> if that was the standard of who I'm going to allow myself to listen to or allow myself to be around. I wouldn't listen to none of y'all. I didn't say it like that. It was a whole lot of men, so I got real, real weird. <laughs> Y'all can understand what I'm saying. I got real, I got, I got real, real, real relevant, real righteous, and I was very wrong. <laughs> but the, 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 I mean, you, and you can see some of the guys. My son, my son, to tell you, some of them dudes is like, <gasps> <laughs> the pastor said that. Yeah, I didn't cuss, but I know it caught him off guard. But he's like, ooh, yeah, this is what's going on, fellas. We don't want to be real with each other. We don't want to be, we, you say, you, what did I say, son? I said, oh, we talk about transparency, but don't nobody want to be vulnerable. Yeah. I'm going to be transparent with you. Man, I'm going to just do like this and you can see what I got. But when I be vulnerable, I'm like, here, take me as I am. Whatever you want to do with me. But no, we'll say, I'm going to be transparent. Because transparency, we can stand or far. But when you get vulnerable, you got to be up close. You feel me? So you gotta be you gotta be committed to Christ, to the church, and to this walk with him. You can't be double-minded. You gotta be accountable to Christ, to, to his church, and to yourself and other brothers or sisters that surround you. Seriously, you can't do it by yourself. I'm good. All right. Let me take the I'm gonna ask you in about six months how that's work. No, matter of fact, I might ask you in about six weeks. Matter of fact, I might just ask you in about six days. In a few more minutes, I may just drop it all the way down and ask you in about six hours. How's that working out for you? <laughs> Trying to do it by yourself. <laughs> I ain't going to get six, six minutes. <laughs> six minutes, Stevie Steve. Six minutes, Stevie Steve. Six minutes, Stevie Steve. Oh, how's that working for you? I can't do it by myself. You can't. We can't do it by ourselves. Right? You're not Superman or Superwoman. But I got superpowers. No, you don't. Because it comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. We left that in foundation class. So you commit to accountability and you got to be responsible to Christ, to his church, and to your walk with him. 
and advancing the kingdom of God, but not by yourself. Right? Amen. So you know what I just gave y'all? I just gave y'all a brand new card today. Commitment, accountability, and responsibility. <laughs> now let me see how you're going to drive for the rest of the day. Amen. Seriously, open up your eyes. Even, look, even the car is smart. Because the car says objects in this mirror are larger than they appear or closer than they appear. So the stuff that got, that sounds like something that we might have read today. He said, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Do we really love him like that? As they say in the South, like talk about. Amen? Amen. All right. That's it for today, man. Anybody? Uh, we can't really get with the whole details of a lot of stuff. And, and you know, like we like to reverberate back to each other because you got to really get on the road. I, I, I was really trying to cut myself off at like 11 30. You know, it didn't happen. All right. So, uh, I went real far off only 30 minutes. <laughs> right? So, um, they might need prayer for anything. We want to definitely make sure that we pray. Seriously, for, definitely for 